Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and I've got a bit of a weird one for you today. You may have heard of the Jersey Left or the Jug Handle, and you may have also heard of the Quadrant Intersection. I'm kind of going to take these two ideas, which are somewhat similar in nature, and blend them into one thing, and sort of make my own variant of it. Initially, I'm going to explain what a Jug Handle is, and what a Quadrant Intersection is, and how that might work. But ultimately, I'm going to go my own way and make something a bit more high density capable, we'll say. Everybody, sit back, relax, enjoy the intersection. It's finally here, it's finally arrived, Jug Handle Day at Yumble Corp. So the build is not particularly technical. The bones of this thing are very simple. I'm actually just going to go 16 units out from the center, and I'm going to do half of that amount, so 8 units. 16 units on this side as well, 8 units over. And then I'm going to connect these two. And that is it. That's the jug handle. Thanks for watching. No, I'm just kidding. This is so so this is the idea. So it's a jug handle aka a quadrant intersection and the goal is always to remove lefts from this intersection here. So I'm going to take a moment using traffic manager to remove all of the left turns and see how this can kind of change the the traffic movements so that there's uh, less conflict. Give me just a moment. Perfect. Illustrated here with the lane arrows, you can see none of them are turning left at the main intersection. All of the lefts have been moved to these minor intersections. I'll show you those movements in just a moment. But what this really does, the benefit, is that now this intersection can be a two-phase light. So the light can operate in two phases going back and forth. There can be a north-south green that happens at the same time, and an east-west green that happens at the same time. So just back and forth between the two. Normally it is a four-phase light without being aided by some other road or, or an overpass or something like that. Normally this is four phases, so much more uptime for everybody. To illustrate the traffic movements, I've got our bus lane tool. So if you want to go left, starting from the eastern side, if they want to go south, netting them a left turn, they're going to take a right and then a left. That's going to be a theme that we see throughout this whole thing. So go right to go left. Same with south, I believe, yeah? That's actually very familiar. That looks like a clover leaf or a partial clover leaf type situation where they're going to go through the intersection. In the case of a clover leaf or a partial clover leaf, they'd go over an overpass, but through the intersection, two right turns, and they've turned left. From the west side, the left turn is go through the intersection, then make a left onto the onto the jug handle there. And from north, the left turn looks like this. So it's actually two lefts at the minor intersections, keeping them entirely out of the major intersection. As I was setting up the lights and lane connectors on these sides, it occurred to me that this is actually not a two-phase light. This is what a two-phase light might look like where there's just two directions and they can go back and forth, and that's great. There's no third or fourth cycle crossing over the middle. This is what a three-phase light would look like. So we've got left turns conflicting with two other things. This other left turn is co conflicting with those two things again, and then the straight throughs are conflicting with all of the lefts. So that is actually a three-cycle light, and I wondered to myself, how can I make this into two cycles? For this thing. And that requires another handle. <laughs> so we've got a second quadrant here. I'm actually going to set this up so it is a dual quadrant, dual jug handle, two phase system for high density traffic. One more thing to note before I move on and do the two quadrant variant. A lot of you are probably wondering why not just use four quadrants if I'm going to do two? This effectively is a clover leaf with an intersection in the middle. If we were to make an overpass, this would be identical in traffic movements to a clover leaf, AKA the weave machine. So if you think about it, this thing would be free flowing. It wouldn't need lights at the ends. I'm not gonna illustrate all that, but um, just trust me, right turning traffic, or excuse me, left turning traffic would be weaving very hard in the middle here. It would be very bad. Um, so I'm going to do something a lot more like a partial clover leaf is what the topography kind of looks a bit more similarly to, uh, the two quadrant variant that is. 
Okay, I think the two quadrant variant is just about set up. And this changes the left turns. So starting from the east, if you want to go south, you're going to go through the intersections and then make a left and a right. And that's going to be mirrored on this side. So that's the same exact movement. On the other network, it is actually even easier. So this is the that uh, cloverleaf movement that we were talking about. Go through and then make two rights and then you're out of it. Identically mirrored across the way. Oh, one more back. Identically mirrored here. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to get the light timed up and we'll run some traffic through it. And here it is, fully operational. I haven't decorated it too much other than some intersection markings so far, but uh, I think that's great. I think I've got the lights timed well enough and I think the intersections are tuned as far as lane math goes and, and the turning movements, things like that. Um, things to point out, things of note, these two intersections, so this direction here and this one up here are completely free flowing. So there's no need to stop on any side. Uh, the rest, the other three, one, two, and three, are all a two-cycle light. They're all running on one light. Let me show you what that looks like. Lots of cars going through. You love to see it. So here is what is going on. When these sides stop, this direction gets to go, and the left turns have to stop. When the other side goes, all the left turns get to go, but the ends have to stop. So the left's here, the left's here. I'll say east and west, I suppose. But yeah, that, that configuration seems to be working great. A couple asymmetrical roads thrown in as well for lane math reasons. But that is doing it. I think that this would be a great solution in a place where a city can't afford an overpass, but they still want to keep a junction functional with an at-grade crossing in the center. That is probably the only reason to do this. If they can afford a bridge, this turns into a partial cloverleaf instantaneously. So maybe it's kind of like the continuous flow intersection in a way where the continuous flow intersection is kind of a band-aid until you can afford an interchange. So if they're fixing to build a partial cloverleaf, they can always put in some ramps just to save the intersection and then elevate the crossing once they're ready. Save up a little bit of money. But that is it. That's that's all I'm going to do on the quadrant slash jug handle intersection. Bit of my own variant on the subject. But yeah, thanks for watching me make this one. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next, please. Uh, and definitely feel free to subscribe here. We also have a Discord server, and I stream twice a week on Twitch. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.